Hi, John. Hey, how are you? <laughs> good, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Jim. I'm fancy bumping into you. <laughs> I know. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Thanks for coming out this Thank morning. Thank you. Could I get you to do an intro of yourself, please, sir? Right, I'm uh, John St, uh, aka Giant Evertonian. I was originally an Adelaide street shooter, and now I live in Sydney. Awesome. John, I'm excited to talk to you a little bit differently this morning than the other guests I've had, because yeah. I know you probably more than the other guests I've had so far. So I'm excited to, oh gosh, I'm gonna like dive right deep into stuff. But did you have coffee this morning, right? Yeah, we had coffee this morning. <laughs> of course we did here, and that's why we're a bit like, la, 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 la. <laughs> yeah, I can't, we're I can't a bit edgy. talk. We had a large one. Maybe because I'm too excited to talk to you. I can't talk. <laughs> um, what do you like about coffee? Because I'm a big fanboy of coffee. Oh, I just love it. Just love it. Coffee and cameras. Coffee and cameras, baby. Um, yeah, it's just a nice, I don't know, I just like coffee. It's like coffee. Okay. I like the way it feel I like the way it makes me feel <laughs> and uh, I love the taste of it. Yeah. I feel the same. And I've become a coffee snob now. Yeah, I'm you one have. of those people. Welcome I'm to an my a life, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can only go to a handful of cafes in Sydney and like, yeah. oh, where do you want to go for coffee? No, I can't go there, I'm sorry. I've already yeah. had coffee. Yeah, I'm good. Um, where do you want to go, John? Which way do you want to head? Well, I was just looking at this wonderful window yeah, here you know, of light like because you know you took some great shots of this, which looks incredible. You've got that light coming in, you got the shadow, the uh, colors, and everything. Yeah. Um, and then you asked me, you well, no, you said you said you take photos like this, but you never post them on Instagram. So I'm curious to pick yeah. your brain on that. Why it's do you think that is? It's interesting because people don't consider that street, and yet I do. <laughs> so, but, so, yeah. Tell, tell me what you consider street photography because you've. By the way, people who don't know, John's got a, a podcast with Mark, and I don't know Mark's last name. I apologize. Mark Davidson. Mark yeah. Davidson, thank you. Um, and I listen to that podcast whenever possible because there's, you've got some incredible photographers on the on there. And you, I remember one day you said, in your mind, uh, street photography is anything you make on the street is yeah. street photography. Would you mind expanding on that? And do you want to walk by the way, or do you want to? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So we're going to walk. Let's go up there and end on the George Street, I sure. think. S says the person who sounds like he's a, you know, he knows where he's going. I'm still learning the city. <laughs> um, so what street to me? Like, there's lots of people out there have a de definition of what street is, and they love to post or share their, their definition of what it is. I right. think it can be anything that has a human element, and that doesn't mean that it has to have a human in it. It can be a shadow on a wall. It can be beautiful light where someone is potentially going to sit at a table. It doesn't have to be on a street. There's some very famous street photographers who did wonderful work uh, on beaches and in other places like that. Oh, yeah. So, but there's quite a few people that would tell you that isn't street. Um, so for me, street photography is just anything that I see that has a human element walking along. And that human element could even be a building that's built by humans, isn't it? Yeah. Unless, you know, it's a pyramid, and that. we all know the pyramids were built by aliens. Yes, But that's yes. a different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, not. now I understand um, what you mean, the, the human element is as long as a human was involved. For me, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I think the definition, it, that's, that's mine. It can be entirely whatever you want. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It can be a dog on the street. There's lots of street photographers that took pictures of dogs. Yeah. So um, that's not a human element. That's a, that's <laughs> another mammal. So um, yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that because uh, I know it's a oh, pretty hot class. topic. Yeah, it is. It's hot. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone has an opinion. And as we all know. Opinions are like, no, I'm not going to finish that sentence. <laughs> Don't uh, say that. You, you might not be able to monetize it. And then. <laughs> yeah. um, the other thing I wanted to ask you today, and there's lots, lots, because I've, again, been lucky enough to spend a bit of time with you shooting outside. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk to you about this thing we spoke about before we came out, which was, so John and I were actually here uh, on George Street, about the same spot, different time of day. Light was incredible. And um, we were doing our own thing separately and we kind of caught up and he showed me some of the photos he was able to make. There was a man with, uh, what you call it, the cowboy hat potentially? Yeah, yeah. and the Cobra. Yeah, yeah. Australian hat. Um, yeah. And then the tram had 
Indiana Jones <laughs> on it. So he showed me this photo of the man kind of standing in front of the pram. The light, again, the light was, I'm not doing it justice, probably ex just yeah. describing it to you. Hopefully, John has that photo somewhere. He can send it to me and I can share it here. <laughs> About 12 months. <laughs> um, and I, you know, I always tell you that I learned a lot just being around you and you're always too humble to accept it. So yeah. uh, tell me about that because I feel like me personally, I'm single focused. So I, I find a subject that I like. There might be another element that I can involve with it. But for the most part, it's I'm singular. But it seems like you're quite observant, not only on the subject, but what's around it. So quite really well at layering and being. And then you said, I don't want to talk on your behalf, but it was Adelaide that forced you to, to yeah. think that way. So we all like, we all know what we like and what we want to capture and what interests us and how we see the world. But f and you know, for you human, it might be high contrast stuff. You know, the 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 light, the light, the the whites and the the darks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I love that too. But once you get that shot, what do you do then? So when we were shooting that, it was all a group of older people with white yes, hair, yeah? I remember that, yeah. And the sun, the sun was coming down, uh, down George Street, and it illuminated their, all their white hair, yeah? <laughs> yeah and yeah. the blue sky, and it was, it was here at the yeah, QVB, right just there. here, Absolutely. yeah? Absolutely. So um, we all got our shots, yeah? Yeah. We all got what we liked. But then I thought, Human's going to have exactly the same shot as me. So <laughs> how can I have another shot or similar, similar? Um, how am I going to get a different? And then so I just took myself out of that moment that I was looking at the light and took a step back and looked at the bigger scene. How can I get a different shot? And then suddenly the tram came up that they were all waiting for. I noticed that the dude had a hat. That's why we were photographing him against the sky. <laughs> and I thought, Jesus Christ, there's Indiana Jones <laughs> on the back of the tram, yeah? Yep. So I put it all together. I thought, how can I get a shot with him maybe holding his hat or in juxtaposition with the Indiana Jones thing, you know? Because that's how my mind works. So I just put it together. But going back to Atlanta, when we were talking in the coffee shop, I came from a very small city. It wasn't, I didn't have anywhere near as much material as you have in Sydney or in Melbourne. And I, it forced me when I first started, when I was shooting every day, how am I going to shoot that one street so I have a picture that I can post every day? How right. am I going to do it? So it forced me to look at that one street 60 different ways. Oh, that's an exaggeration, but you know what I'm saying? No, I know what you're saying, yeah. How, so I got my light and shadow shot. How am I going to make it look different for the next shot? How am I going to make it look different? How am I going to make it look different? And so it takes you out of that, and you have to move two metres to the left or two metres to the right. But as we were talking about before, when people say, oh, I walk up and down George Street and it's boring. Yeah, it's the same street, but that street, this street, and I walk up and down it all the time too in my time in Sydney. But it changes every minute of the day. And at different times of the year, the light will hit a building that will illuminate a different part. It will change something, whether you're looking for light and shadow work or a pool of light, or whether it hits people's faces when you're walking along. It changes all of the time. And there was a group of guys who caught up with Sam Strong. Hey, Sam, it was nice to meet you. I'm sorry I didn't get to say goodbye to you. Um, I would have liked to have caught up with you all yesterday, but I had some friends over from Adelaide that I was showing around Sydney. And we were in the city and we're walking along and near Haymarket. And there was this pool of light uh, that was bouncing off a building. And I went, what time is it? 2.45. I'll have to come back at 2.45 because I'm in the city from 8.30, 9 o'clock until normally I go home at 2 because um, I'm tired after five hours of walking around and shooting. It gets mentally tiring. Um, but I thought, I hadn't seen the light there before. And I looked and it was because it was bouncing off a building and it may not be there in two weeks' time. <laughs> Absolutely right, yeah. <laughs> you know, because... The, the sun will be lower in the sky potentially and it may not hit, hit that building window the way it is now and it won't illuminate that area for five minutes. So this street might look familiar all the time but that's why you always need to go over and over and over 
And that's what I like. I want to find something new. So, and in Adelaide, I had to. I was forced to do it. I love that. I think that the one thing I take away from that conversation is that because you were limited yeah. by the area you were in, you were yep. forced to learn a new skill. Now, you could have gone quite the opposite way. You could have just kind of given up and, you know, thrown up your hands in the air and gone, I need to travel. I need to go to, to <laughs> that, Europe. That helps to too. <laughs> of course. But it was in the middle of a pandemic, so it was a bit <laughs> <So>. difficult. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think about that and I think about, I was having a chat with the photographer yesterday and he has got, um, I want to say five or six cameras, yeah. all a little bit different. Uh, multiple lenses and he yeah. was complaining how when he's about to leave the house he doesn't know what to take with him and I, I only have one camera and one lens and you yeah. were talking about being limited mm -hmm. to one city that was locked into a pandemic yeah. and that forced you to pick up a new skill and now that's with you daily you, you think um, about George Street which again I struggle with sometimes because I've been living in Sydney for but that like, looks amazing. But he, I know, but I've not seen it like that there before. I haven't either. <laughs> look at that. It's that. It's just that there. Oh, we don't need to look for trams because they're not running at the minute, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of a safer day to shoot in the city. Uh, I've nearly been killed by a tram a few times. <laughs> oh, man, it's, it's really good to get that feedback from you, though. Maybe not feedback, but just that thought process around limiting yourself sometimes actually will teach you a new skill. Um, as opposed to just getting frustrated and going, I need to uh, buy a new camera, I need to travel to a, a new city every month. It, all that can help. Yes, uh, absolutely. You can definitely pick up new skills by um, being limited. There we go. Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you anyway, a... Oh, no, I'm not going <laughs> <laughs> to... Uh. See, that dude was checking out his head. Sorry. You're, <laughs> You're in the shot. Um, that dude was just checking out his hair in the window, and I would have, if I wasn't talking to a screen, so, uh, or a camera, I would have probably <laughs> caught that. that. So, uh, yeah, so, but I hadn't seen that light like that before, and because I exposed for the highlights, it'll darken everything down, and wasn't quite right. The light was good there, but I was watching the people and they weren't being lit. So um, ah. it probably won't be a very good shot. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you don't take the shot. You know? That's right. You still try it. You know? And maybe if you stand there a little bit longer, we had a little bit more time, it, the light might change enough for someone's face just to be lit a fraction. And then that, for me, that's something. But I've not seen it there. Look at, look at the way that light's lighting up there now. <laughs> Just because it's off a building, I think. It's off a building. It's reflecting somewhere. Oh, you know, it's, a bit, it's a Sunday today, the city's a bit quieter. And there's a strong wind, lovely. There is, it was windy last night, mate. But yeah. John, so, yes. there's another thing I wanted to ask you. This is something I asked you a while ago. Maybe we'll wait, we'll wait to cross and maybe the, the wind will pass. Oh, it's all right, we'll give it a minute. Woo! Oh my gosh. Wind's yeah. good. Yeah. Man. Right hand. Is Melissa O'Shaughnessy loves wind because it gives movement to her shots. It's one thing we learned talking to Melissa. It's a bit of a heads up that's the next podcast coming <laughs> <laughs> with Melissa O'Shaughnessy. Looking forward to that one. Come on, cars, let's go. OMG, let's go. Yeah. Thank you. So another thing I learned about you, oh sorry, learned from you I should say, yeah. is as you know I'm still fairly new to street photography and yeah. I, I have taken maybe three or four shots of homeless people. Uh, ah, homeless, okay. Yes. This comes up a lot. So you, I, I asked you, I said, hey John, help me understand the etiquette when it comes to taking photos of the, the homeless. Would you mind just helping the audience who may be also new to the concept understand sure. the etiquette around photographing homeless people on the street. Okay, so, and these are just my opinions. It doesn't mean they're right or wrong, yeah? Sure. Everyone's different. I guess, for me, it depends on your moral compass, and my moral compass is um, I don't shoot or 
let's not use the word shoot, all right? <laughs> I don't photograph, photograph people on the street. Right. Um, uh, homeless people on the street for myself. I don't judge other people if they want to do it, as long as they do it in a respectful way. And that doesn't uh, embarrass those people. It's, I just don't, I don't want to take it. And the analogy I use when people ask me is, would you, if you were in your hat home, in your lounge room, would you like someone to put a camera through your window and take a photo of you? Right. And most people say, that, some people would say they don't care. So most people would say, no, I wouldn't like that. And I, I go, okay. Like it, yeah. So I quaint the street for homeless people as their home. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes they'll wander into a shot and you might take a photo, yeah? That, that's accidental if it's a bigger picture. But I'm not going to go if they're sitting in their doorway and take a photo of them. Of course. It, that's, that's me. If you want to do that, that's fine. You have to think, why are you taking that photo? And that, goes, that, that can be applied to any reason why you take a photo of anybody. You know, you have to realize that People don't know what you're doing. They don't understand how you see things, how you see a, f a scene. Mm -hmm. they, even if you explain to them, they probably still don't care. So you need to ask, why are you taking that photo? So if someone does approach you, you can explain or at least have a reason for it. Um, and that applies for me to homeless. I've taken pictures of homeless twice, maybe three times. Once was at Christmas when he was walking past a Christmas window full of abundance and he had all his possessions in a trolley mm -hmm. and two one of the homeless guys in Adelaide I used to talk to on a regular basis because I got to know him he asked me to take his portrait so I did um, but um, yeah that's about it that's it that, Thank that's you. it but if you want to document it if there's a reason why you want to do it because at the end of the day they are on the street too they're part of, of it they're yeah. uh, You've got to be careful as well that you don't allow your moral judgment to discount them like they don't exist. They yeah. do exist. You just have to be, um, what's the word? Respectful. Respectful. Yeah. So, for that's example, it. if you were working on a project that was supposed to highlight um, poverty in, mm. in a city or homelessness yeah. in a city, um, in your opinion, would you be comfortable with that? that yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It would be a wonderful thing. Okay. There's a great photographer in Finland called Oscar Wollstone. Hi, Oscar. He's on the, he's been on the podcast too. <laughs> he did a wonderful project uh, working with social workers there and That's having right. to deal with mental illness and, and the homelessness in Finland, so in Helsinki. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's, so, there's, there's, of course, but if you want to photograph people, you can. I'm, I'm not going to judge yeah. you. I, but it's just something I want to do. And I think that's what we all have to be careful of, is that we don't pass our own judgments onto others. Of course. You know. No, I appreciate you sharing that yeah. perspective. And like you said, it's just your opinion. It's just um, my opinion. Of course it's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. Anyway, oh my yeah, God, yeah. everyone knows right. I'm right. <laughs> of course. God so damn it, just my wife what? doesn't. You have a podcast, of course you're right, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it's great not having any tramps. <laughs> it's amazing. I, it feels weird to walk in the middle <laughs> yeah. of George Street no, and not, not have to worry about getting, getting hit by a tram. Like the old days before <laughs> the trams were here. Right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay, completely different subject now. And I ask this probably of everyone who is um, on, on this channel is around style, having a specific style. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, and I, I I feel like I know your answer, but do you feel like you have a specific style of photography? Ah, maybe don't know my answer. Mm. Oh. Um, when I first started, you know, people would say, you know, you have to get a style, you have to get a, an aesthetic that people recognize you and you know, mm. and, and you, have to, you have to stick to it so you can build a brand. And, um, and I thought when I first started, how the hell am I going to do that? <laughs> I just want to take photos, you know? And, <laughs> I was really stressed about it, like, and then it just happened. I didn't think I had a style, but people started telling me, and when I posted my photos, I knew it was your photo as soon as it came up. And I would look at it and I'd go, well, how? How? And well, then I'd ask them and they'd go, I don't know, it's just a way. As soon as the photo comes up, I can tell it's probably a John ST, John Evertonian shot. So. <laughs> I couldn't see it. I still sometimes don't think I have a style. I think you've mentioned it as well. You, 
There's a way maybe that I edit. Um, you, you definitely have a style, in I have my a, opinion. I have a style, I guess. It's the old light and shadow stuff I really like, but people have said it's more than that. I, I, I don't deliberately go out to have it. It just, it just developed over time. It developed over time. So you, you, you're saying you then specifically worked on building something, but yeah. you naturally gravitated towards a, a visual signature that um, obviously people are recognizing and uh, associating with you, so. Yeah, um, I, I find it interesting when people say they recognize my photos over other people's when I don't think I'm doing anything really that much different to a know. large proportion of other people, you know? I I know. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I, I, I do light and shadow stuff, it's, you know, I mean, that's what I like, so that's what I do, so. <laughs> I know at the end of the day, I've said this before in the channel, is that it's difficult to create a, a very unique photo these days because everyone makes photos and we're all influenced subconsciously at least by others' yeah. work. But segue to my next question, and it's still around the same subject, is you're probably the only street photographer I know that shoots on a zoom lens. Ah, so other than Sony shooters. <laughs> oh, I had to get any because oh. that's... <laughs> I if don't hate <laughs> Sony shooters. What? I, I thought you loved Sony shooters. No, I love them. About? I love, I love the everyone. <laughs> You're all my children. I love you all. <laughs> this is working out to be my favorite episode so far. <laughs> so. Yeah, I do a shoot in a Zoom. I never did. I never used to. Okay. I start, when I first started, I got my, I got my uh, a Nikon. Yep. Uh, I think it was a 3400D or D3400, I can't remember. Yep. It's a cheap plastic camera that I learned on, and that came with a kit lens, and that's where I started. I started far away, and I worked closer. And like with everybody else, you, you look at YouTube, and you listen to other people's opinions, and it said, if you want to get really, really good at being a photographer, and you want to be a real street photographer, you need to shoot 35 prime. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, is that prime rib, or is that... <laughs> need to do a bit more research? And I stupidly went out and bought a 35 millimeter uh, prime, prime lens. lens. Yeah. Okay. And which I say stupidly because I was so ignorant and naive that I didn't realize it was on a crop center, sensor, which made it a 50. 50. So, <laughs> duh. Oops. So, that, so I learned on a 50 prime. Okay. So a 50 prime, well, I should say on a prime, it improved my photography no end. First, your images are sharper. Two, it forces you to have to frame up. Three, it makes you have to become braver because you've got to get closer. And some people say, well, it's a 50, it's not that close. Yeah, I used to get close to people still. So, but I found that <laughs> um, I nearly got killed a few times. Oh, God. Because as soon as I would see a shot, I would lift the camera and I would, I always lift the camera to my eye. I don't use the screen rarely unless it's really low or, uh, you know. I'm trying to do Julia Connington type work. Uh, who she showed me. So that's how you learn from other people. Um, I lift the camera to my eye and I go. And I used to just walk into the road. The shot was everything. Right. Everything was the shot. And then I remember during the pandemic, I, was, I came to Sydney. I caught up with some Fuji people and I was stopping traffic because I was like going along the road <laughs> <laughs> trying to get this lady with my camera. Um, Stop in traffic. And I looked and the bus driver was like, Did you get the shot? Did you get the shot? <laughs> <laughs> and like, my friends are like, that never happens in Sydney. Look at the light over there, man. Head that way. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I follow um, you. My friends are like, it never happens in Sydney. You normally just run over and kill you. So, uh, so yeah, I, and then what happened was my, when I was working for the university, um, they found out I was a photographer and they said, do you want to take some photos of events? I was like, yeah, sure, and I tried with my Prime, and it was hard to do events with a Prime. Right. Couldn't get the close enough to the stage. So I went and bought a cheap zoom lens for my Fuji, um, 18 to 135, it cost me 500 bucks second hand, and, you know, and I was a Prime shooter back then, and I put it on, I thought, I'll just go out on the street and give it a, give it a whirl. I missed that. I'll give it a... I got you. I'll give it a bit of a shot. Yeah. And, um... I really liked it. <laughs> and I liked it because I still shoot, my, it always sits at 35, because that's the focal length that I've adjusted to and got used to. I really like 35, it sits on, this is my kit lens for my, for my Fuji, it's on 35 now. Okay. Um, 
but I found that I don't need to run into the middle of the road to get a shot anymore <laughs> and stand there. I can zoom in. I still go close if I, if I can, but also I can get shots with a zoom that I couldn't get with a prime because it compresses it. I can get a shot from here and it shows more of a scene than having to go up right. than having to shoot with the prime. Um, so, but I still shoot with primes at night because I want the light, the, the more open aperture and of course. so, but through the day, through you the don't day. need a prime if you're doing what I'm doing. I'm shooting at F8, F11, F13, F16, F22. <laughs> you know, you don't need that with a prime. I use it for more light when it's low light situations. So I, I shoot, I've got a prime in my bag now, 23. So if I want to, I'll move to it. Okay. I don't, but I, will, I can if I want to. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you change a lens before. Ah. I know. I was going to tell you that man was wanting to <laughs> light, but you were deep in, yeah, deep I in thought. I was so. deep in <laughs> giving you my knowledge and wisdom. <laughs> oh my gosh. Absolutely cracked me up. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. And since you're being hilarious, why is it that I find, uh, not I find, yeah. I believe that every photographer I've met so far, including you, super humble. It is hard <laughs> to give you guys a compliment. You do not take it well, especially you. Um, but why do you think that is? Do you think it's photography that draws that kind of a personality into it? No. No? I don't think, I think it's because we're introverts. We're all introverts? We're all introverts, and see now if now if I'd had my prime, yeah, yeah, I would have zoomed with my feet, <laughs> and that lady would have gone. I wouldn't have got that shot. She was just in the right light, picking up the sign. Now it might be a nothing shot. I don't know. I shoot anything and everything. I don't spray and pray, but I shoot anything and everything. I don't care. I have, I don't have film. I have a digital camera. <laughs> it doesn't cost me any money to shoot as many shots as I want. All it takes is vast amounts of time to go through all the shit that you take, <laughs> which, which, which I hate doing too, so. <laughs> which leads to my next question is, I've been out with you and I've seen some of the, uh, what you call them, backstreet bangers. Uh, back, back screen, screen, sorry, back screen, back screen bangers. bangers. <laughs> um, and that's going to be, oh, if I can pan to it quickly, I really hope you get a couple of those shots because that yeah. looks incredible. See, that lady's wearing red and there's the red no standing, so, no stopping sign. And But then she wasn't by herself, so... But I still we'll took, see, the shot took the shot because anyway. that's how you learn. You look at that shot and you go, OK, <sighs> so it might not be worth... It might not be a banger to post. It might not be worth posting but you learn how to compose. Where, you know where she's walked now, where she's gonna be lit. Yeah. So I will look and just go, oh, he's chimping, he's chimping. <laughs> I'm not chimping because I'm looking at the shot, I'm looking at how it's framed up. So how can I improve it? Yeah. Where, where was that person lit? I don't shoot on burst mode, I shoot on single shot, but I take multiple shots with it. And that is because I want to see how the person's traveling through the frame, to see how they're lit. So if a perfect person comes through, I have a rough idea where they're going to be so I can get that person. Next time. Mirrorless yeah. cameras are pretty good. They respond really quickly you go to um, instantaneous. Whereas if you have a mirror, there's a bit of a lag. That's when I noticed with my Nikon, there was always a bit of a lag between when I took the shot and what actually uh, captured. So, okay. fraction, but when you're... It makes a difference. When you're trying to get someone mid-stride or perfectly aligned and lit, that, that one-tenth of a second makes all the difference. With the Fuji, it's instantaneous. So, um, yeah, but that's what I do. So I take a test shot, I look, see how it's changed the light again. It's moved, that's got thinner, that's got wider. Now when they go in the dark spot over there, they're lit before they weren't. And how long's that been? Two minutes? Mm -hmm. And it's changed. Changed quickly already, yeah. Changed. And that's what I was saying back there, like the light, how I saw it with all those 
lines and stuff was great, but the people walking through the frame, I didn't want to silhouette them. I wanted the, the, the line to hit them. them and their face to be lit just for that second. That's what I like. <laughs> so do you, do you then pre-visualize yeah. based on a scene that you're at what you're looking for? Does that uh, sound yeah. about yeah. right? I hope you get this single man looking. Uh, yeah. Uh, no? It's getting there. But see, it all depends where they walk on the path too. <laughs> if they're too close to the wall, he's going to be not, when he walks through, he, if they're closer this way, they're lit more in the middle of that black yeah, pillar yeah. where that light is, because I've it's dark and so yeah, it changes all the time. Amazing. And then uh, also, you know, yeah. Let's move on because let's move on. It's getting, getting bored. It's getting <laughs> bored. So I don't I don't camp. I don't fish. I I give something five, ten minutes, I get a half decent shot that I'm happy with, I move. Because if I'm wasting all my time on this spot, there could be a spot right there that's only there for two minutes that I've missed. Yeah, so I love it. But then again, that could change and I could get the perfect person, which <laughs> will happen as soon as I go there. The perfect person <laughs> will come through, through and I go, shit, a brick, why wasn't I more patient? <laughs> you know, I you're making my patient. job really easy. I don't have to ask you a lot of questions. You no, just I'm a give me all the, all the answers I'm looking for. Sorry. Sorry, it's human. I, I'm not very good. I'm a good interviewer, not a good interviewee. <laughs> How, how's it being on the other side of the... Difficult? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> so what you said before, why, you, why do you choose to be humble? Yeah. Because I don't rate myself as a photographer yet. I have okay. only been doing it for just over four years. I, 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 yes, I take some nice shots. I, take some, I get some good shots. Sometimes I get some great shots. But it doesn't make me a good photographer. <laughs> Interesting. So I always think that, you know, so then let me unpack I'm that then. I'm just a person, human. You are I'm a person. I'm just a person. Don't treat me like I'm an yeah. object. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a first. superstar in any... I am. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not being humble. Stop no, being think... funny so I can ask you a serious question, John. Oh, my gosh. Now you see I've lost my train of thought. No, okay. So you said you don't think you're a good photo. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it oh, is. But I don't think I'm going to get anyone walking through here. This is Sydney. Anything a, is possible. On a Sunday. Yeah. Um, so what is a good photographer? Because you're saying, even <laughs> though in my opinion, you've got consistent, great images. Yeah. You don't think you are a good photographer. So no. what is a good photographer in your opinion? Putting on a spotlight again, no pressure. I don't know. You don't know. Okay, fair enough. Fair I don't enough. know. <laughs> I don't know. You okay. know what? My, I think my issue in, throughout my whole life is I, I don't have uh, a huge amount of confidence in my own abilities, and that's limited me to a long time for a long time. And I think it continues to to play a part in my life, and probably always will. But I prefer. I just like doing what I'm doing because I want to do it. I prefer to, my role is, all, my, my life has always been to help others. And I always prefer helping others over myself. That's how I've always been. That's... And so what I do here is just, uh, I, don't, I don't aim to be a good photographer. I just do it because I enjoy it. If I become a good photographer from it, then so be it. But that's, I just, my first, my first, my first principle is enjoy it. Enjoy it. I enjoy it. And then if I become, I, I, I never knew how to use a camera properly. I learned, I learned through Sean Tucker <laughs> and, and YouTube. And I had, I could take a nice photo. I've always been able to take photos. I used to take all our holiday snaps and, and things like that and party photos. I knew. Maybe my mind just went I knew how to frame up and get everyone in frame and lined up and they were nice. They were better than half my friends who were drunk. <laughs> you know, I was blurred and out of focus and half a person's head would be missing here. So I guess I've always had that visual type of thing. I don't know, I just I just like looking at things and Making capturing something it. out of it, yeah. And and for something for me. Here it could be 
And that building and the reflections on there, the reflections on that ripple there, the shadow here, the light on the wall, the shadow there, the mirror there, that building, the architectural curves of everything. And I might take a shot of that because it looks visually appealing to me. And I've always looked at things like that. And just walking along, I would look at it and I would see it and go, I really like that. I like landscapes and stuff. So Canadian flag, blah, blah, blah. Now I have a tool to be able to capture that <laughs> so I can record it. And I don't have to just have it in my memory because I'm losing my mind. <laughs> and because uh, I'm getting older, can't remember shit. So yeah. And then I share it with people and Thankfully, people like it. They do, and we do. Um, and Hopefully. I appreciate you opening up around your, how do I phrase this the way you said it, around your inability to feel confident throughout um, your life. And yeah. then that potentially uh, not letting you have enough confidence in your work, which again, I find inspiring and amazing. and. Um, and humbling. Uh, yeah. You are very humble. I think I've known you for a few months now and you're always willing to help people. And I love that about you. And I think that's why I like spending time with you. Um, yeah. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. No, nah, um, it's boring. I'm just a perfectionist. Next? You're a perfectionist? I'm a perfectionist to the point that it's debilitating. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is ever good enough. I look at a shot and I go, that's a great shot, but it could have been better. Oh, okay. It could have been better. But at the same time, I'll always post something on Instagram. <laughs> I'm not that much. <laughs> Perfectionist. Doggo there. Um, hey, how are you? what John does. How are you? He had full walk. Low walk. Oh. My family had Cocker Spaniels. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they're great dogs. Oh, they're awesome, man. Awesome. Now, take a photo? Yeah. Is that right? Oh! That's too cute. Oh, don't cry, it's okay. <laughs> Have a good day, man. See you later. Ciao. So, yeah. And, if, you know, they tell you not to interact with people on the street. Well, I'm interacting with people on the street, you know? So. I love dogs. <laughs> you do love dogs. I love dogs. My friend in Adelaide said, you know, the only time I ever see you light up, I can tell when you've seen a dog. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love dogs. Um, but that's just an interaction, you know. I wanted to get a photo. The guy saw me. I hadn't asked. I didn't want him to feel uncomfortable. He's just doing yeah. his Sunday morning thing, so. And I've got my camera on you, and then I'm sure he's like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, so that was, you know. that was lovely of you. I've seen you do something like that before as well. We were walking out of a cafe a few weeks ago. There yeah. was a couple of girls sitting in the window. Yeah. And you took some shots of them, and then I saw you walk up, yeah. turn your camera around, uh, and show them the photo. Can yeah. you walk me through that, or walk us through that so, process? So we were, we, I think we just caught up for a coffee. Yeah. And um, watch the truck there. Um, and they were, they were in the coffee shop window, just doing their thing, having a nice casual chat. Yeah. They were in great light, and I stuck my big camera right up in their face and took a photo, yeah? You did, yeah. And she that. was like, <laughs> like, what the F, you know? And, yeah. Uh, you had, what are you doing? What you're doing, and I, you, this, is, this is what I was saying earlier. You, you know what you're doing. You know how you've got your camera set up. You know maybe that you're darkening everything. You, they're perfectly lit. 99% of the people don't comprehend or understand or care about that. So I didn't want her to feel uncomfortable like I was some kind of dirty perv because we're a bloke with a camera, yeah? yeah. And she was a young girl or, uh, you know, in her yeah, early was, 20s, yeah? yeah? exactly. And just ha trying to have a quiet coffee with her friend and she could have been breaking up and you know from her from her boyfriend and was upset but she was in the perfect light and I wanted to capture that moment but she didn't know that so I took the photo because I always take the photo <laughs> um, and then I went up to the window and I showed her, showed her the photo yeah and I remember seeing yeah her and reaction. she was like oh yeah thank you <laughs> and that's all it takes sometimes but if she went get rid of it it would have been deleted yeah 
Oh, I just run away. <laughs> <laughs> like my old broken hip. <laughs> uh, it's got down here. There's probably going to be nobody down here. Man, I'm still amazed. Every time I see the bridge or the, or the opera house, I... Draws you in, doesn't it? I'm still like that about Australia. I've lived here for 36 years now. Man, and, I'm uh, the same. Every time I go on a train crossing the bridge, oh, I still man. look at the opera house. It's uh, You know, it's I still can't believe I live in Australia. And same. It always happened to everybody else. I never ever thought it would happen to me. And 36 years on, I look at this, man. See? See, now, if I got a prime, I'd have to get so close, and by the time I got there, either the, the scene's gone. changed, yeah. or he's aware of me, and he'll stop doing what he's doing. Exactly. So, I zoomed in, yeah? Yeah. Mm, cheating, maybe. <laughs> I mean, look. You've got a drone. He's aware of me there. now. Yeah, it's his drone. Yeah. So, yeah, I zoomed in. How dare you, John? How dare I you? I know. But see, my camera's set to 35 again. It's back to what I like. A zoom in, go back to 35. 35 I'm starting it is. to shoot more at 23 as well. So, um, what do you prefer? Is there a... Which is the, uh, pro, you know, 35. Um, what? Oh, another set. Orange, gold, he'll come up good. He's lit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is how I see a scene. So, I like the orange. Sorry, I got my cap turned because I was shot. Look cool. I look shot like portrait like instead of landscape. Um, I like the way he's lit, the building's lit, the, the, he almost mimics the squares, the way he's standing, okay. the orange, the orange, the dog's lit, with the bloke just looking at his phone, it, it just all comes together, you know, like... Did you zoom in again on this one too, because it's... No, I shot a 35 because I wanted to get more oh, in, gotcha, so, gotcha. Uh, okay. you know, um, look, if, 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 if I can, if I can, I will go to the scene and and try to get it at 35. But if I know that dude is only holding his hands up for that to one. block the sun for a second, I will zoom in and I'll take the shot. Yeah. It, might, it might not work. It might not look good, but I'm going to get it anyway. <laughs> because then I can make the decision at home when I go through my 55 terabytes of images oh for the day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know? I'm, go I'm going to go up and say hello to the dog. <laughs> go. <laughs> this is a great spot through the day. I love it. it. I like, shoot I here a lot. I need to come back on a weekday when there's some people here. You know, dogs, they're... Nah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, for a coffee with your dad. Hey, man, how are you? Good, thanks. So I just love dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I've got mine at home, so I'm always, always patting dogs. Yeah, he had for coffee. Yeah. Having coffee with your dad. Yes, yes. I don't have any treats, sorry. <laughs> this one's like, get out of the way. Oh, get out of the way. He's mine. <laughs> have a good day, mate. So cute. Um, yeah. And this is great light. It is. It's great like light. I said, I gotta come back when. Uh, when the people at work around here. Yeah, so and sometimes some... it can be really too busy here. For sure. Uh, I just posted a load of shots here. Um, I was just standing and I came out one day and I, I I like shooting more than I like processing. Yeah. So I hate processing. <laughs> but I've only just started processing raw images recently. What What is it about the processing piece that um... I hate Just being in like... front of a screen. That's, that used to be my job. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, OK. Being in front of a computer screen all day. And so what I used to do was I used to just shoot. I shoot raw and JPEG, so I always have raw if I want to, you know, get that banger shot and I want to turn it into a big poster or something. But I was so lazy, I used to just go through all my JPEG images, check, put them on my phone and just do it in my coffee shop before work. That's what I did all my processing. But I've realised that, you know, <laughs> As good as Fuji JPEGs are, and they are exceptionally good. Um, they're not as good as a raw image. Right. So, uh, so yeah, I start processing raw, but it, I just find it so time consuming. Whereas with my JPEG image, I go on Snapseed, quick, straighten, crop, light and shadow a bit, highlights up, down, whatever, okay. post, banger. Banger, done.
<laughs> but now, you know, it's, uh, I love this. No. Well, that's the other thing I've learned. If you can't get the shot staying up, come down. If you want to silhouette something, come down. If they're not right, duck. There's something here, I really like it. There is, again, uh, man, I like, come. So this is what I see. Lit, 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 lit. Yeah. Light, or I should say light, but the poles are, and sometimes I shoot in color most of the time, unless it's dull, and now I shoot in black and white, because that helps me. Okay. It helps me if, if, the, if it's overcast, it helps me see images better, because I'm so attracted to how the light is. When it's dull, I can't see the shot, but in black and white, it changes things because it's more about the frame than the light. Yeah, it's about things like the composition. So right. that, it's still composition anyway, but here I'm looking at the blue sky, the circles on the wall, this is lit, that white building, those poles are all lit up white because I'm yeah, underexposed. Oh, yeah. The light coming down here, the silver here, it all just comes together and all I need is some Somebody. person to come and yeah. I will silhouette them against that blue sky. And at this level it's not right, but if I come down here, voila, Get that shot. I have a bigger spot to silhouette them if I wish. Or preferably come down the stairs and hopefully they will be lit here. But I've anyway, got a right there, it's, yeah. this is an office district, and um, it is in a Sunday morning. Sunday yeah, morning, there's one cafe here, and that's it. One cafe, yeah. Oh, man, I feel like I could talk to you for hours. It's um, a lot of factory. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry, man. Yeah. Is there anything that I haven't asked you, John? Anything that you want to share with us that I haven't asked you? Do you feel like you want to get off your mind, or no? I don't no? think so. I think if you. Oh. Ooh, she's wearing white. It should reflect a bit more light. Perfect. Yeah? <laughs> I feel like you got that back, back screen think, banger, maybe? I maybe, but she's got a pole sticking out of her head, so it's not perfect. Oh. <laughs> but um, It's a new look. But the light, the light was good when she, her face was lit. Um, but where, where she came down, where she was lit, the pole is coming out the top of her head now. So, um, gotcha. that's why I say, yeah, I got a shot, but now I know. I know where she's going to be lit, and now I have to see, yeah. Where it's going to be. Yeah, is there anything you would like to ask me, Human? Uh, because I'm horrendous at... Uh, no, no, I mean, uh, I could ask you about your post-processing, because you mentioned you have literally terabytes of terabytes. photos. Terabytes. And now I know the reason why you don't want to spend that time, or you enjoy spend time on the street more than you do in front of a computer. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know how to use Lightroom properly because I'm horrendous and I use everything with a notepad. <laughs> and uh, Zone Focus, Steve told me that I'm pretty much doing what Lightroom would do, but in an analog way uh, by using a notepad and <laughs> I'm horrendous. I'm not, I'm, I, don't like, I don't like doing it. I prefer to take photos and creating images and then I'll go, that's nice. And then it goes on a hard drive. <laughs> you know, I'm only just processing oh images from when I first arrived in February. That breaks my heart. That's, I don't know how to, what analogy I would use for that. It's like going and buying a Ferrari and just putting it in the garage and just going, all right, that's a good place for it. Let's just leave it there. See, now, this is, this is why Sydney's bloody awesome, yeah? It is awesome. Yeah, tell me about it. So we just said no one, no one. It's going to come through there. <laughs> and no one. Because it's a business district and there's one coffee shop. If there's one thing I've learned about Sydney, there's always someone going to come through. The problem is, in Sydney, is there'll either be a car or multiple people <laughs> that you don't want. And I would rather have... An isolated. Yeah, person. I'd rather have an isolated subject, but I'd rather have some people than no people at all, which, was, which is Adelaide. You, uh. could wait, you could wait here for an hour. Jeez. And no one would probably come through. And that's happened more because since COVID. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Maybe I'll ask you one last thing. This yeah. is um, maybe dig a little bit deeper. You were talking about 
on your podcast around, I think I've asked you this before in person, but it'd be good probably to have it on here as well. You struggled in Adelaide, and yeah. then you came to Sydney. Initially, you were overwhelmed by how busy the city yeah. is compared to Adelaide. Yeah. But then from a mental health perspective and from a wanting to go out and shoot yeah. perspective, it really helped you out. Uh, would you mind expanding on that for us a little bit? Is that all right? Okay, yeah, sure. So I'll give you a little bit of background. You know, I've just been waffling shit, man. <laughs> uh, I, I worked in education for 35 years and then I decided to leave. So uh, against my accountant's advice. <laughs> um, so I keep looking at that spot all the time. And I decided that we needed a change and we moved to states and blah, blah, blah. COVID made me think about the world differently. So I left work and um, I was supposed to go and shoot in Adelaide a lot and concentrate on my photography, but I just couldn't do it. I wasn't in a, I wasn't in a good place mentally and um, I found it difficult not having a job anymore, to be honest. I thought it would be the best thing ever, but it was quite difficult. Okay. Um, so then we decided that we were going to, we were initially going to move to Queensland and then we moved to Sydney and that's rejuvenated me. It's um, Adelaide, I was just going out and I felt like I was repeating myself over and over again and I'd already got that shot, I'd already got that shot because I'd already photographed that street 60 different ways. I couldn't think of 61 ways of photographing it. So, but every now and again, you know, I'd find a little, a little patch of light that I'd never seen before, but it was becoming Rare. Mm, rarer and rarer and I wasn't enjoying it anymore and I just noticed that my Adelaide was dying it was dying it was like an onion I start on the outside of the city and I'd work, I'd work in and I after the pandemic I noticed that the outer layers were all dead there was no people there was no shops anymore right. all the restaurants had gone the cafes had gone the office workers hadn't come back but the more you worked into the center of the city it looked normal but the outside of the city was gone. So, um, yeah, it was depressing. And then I would wait 10, 20, 30 minutes and no one would ever walk through and it was getting difficult. Nobody, not a soul. So I became a bit... I used street photography to, to connect with my community and feel life and the soul of where I live. And I wasn't feeling that anymore. And um, yeah, so and then I came to Sydney and I'd been coming to Sydney through the pandemic a lot, and I thought it was busy. Uh, I'd been coming to Sydney a lot before I was a photographer, because um, my sister-in-law lives here. And um, I thought I knew the city, and I thought during the pandemic it was busy. And then I arrived, I caught up with Steve, and I was coming in on the tram. And all the, you know, Australia just opened up again. Um, Chinese students were back. Uh, Haymarket in Chinatown was manic. And I was like, holy shiver me timbers. How am I going to be able to capture this after coming from nothing? I was overwhelmed by the huge masses of people and the busyness of it all. How did I adapt? We're humans. And um, we don't realize how quickly we can adapt to things that are uncomfortable. We, it. It's always far worse in our mind than it is in reality. And I just went out and then... Just kept at it, right? Kept at it. And then you learn. You learn how to do it. And then you go exploring and then you find your quieter parts of the city and then you know where it's busy. So it's just about exploring. Great explorers. <laughs> That's you. what street photographers are. Thank you, Human. I hope that answered some of your questions. It, it did. I was going to ask you what helped you get through it, but you, you explained that as well. So you make my job yeah. very easy today. Um, thanks for coming out, John. Thank you, Human. It's I keep been, looking at that I know you spot. keep looking at that spot. Maybe I'll stop recording so we can focus on uh, making some good photos, man. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Human. Thanks very much. And thanks for whoever's watching, watching. Thank you for your support. Really appreciate it. Support one another. It's only where you grow and improve. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and Truly. you're a true example of that, John. Thank you. Appreciate it. I've learned it, from so many other people. <laughs> you're too humble, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, man.